Well, I started as a film scholar back in the 1960s. I, I had a kind of unorthodox film education because when I went to University of Wisconsin, we only had two film classes and I took them both right away. And so I was really self-taught. And uh, then I worked with Orson Welles, which I consider my film school. I worked with him for six years and that was the first real big film that I worked on and I got to work with a master. I would go to other filmmakers like Howard Hawks. I spent seven years talking to him. A book called Hawks and Hawks came out of that. I would talk to Frank Capra. People, anybody I admired, I would try to talk to. If I had to define myself, I'd call myself an investigative reporter. And so when I write film scholarship, I'm an investigative reporter. I investigated Frank Capra for seven and a half years. And Investigated Spielberg for three years plus, and I keep doing that because he keeps working. And John Ford, I spent 30 years off and on working on my biography of him, and I'm always trying to turn up new things. When I write books, uh, my journalistic background, my screenwriting background, and my teaching background really help. I wrote a book on screenwriting called Writing in Pictures. Screenwriting made mostly painless, which is based on my teaching here at San Francisco State, the 10 years that I've been teaching screenwriting. So it's, it's a synthesis, and I think that helps um, make my life interesting because it's, I'm not just a narrow specialist in one little area, and I would find that really uh, uh, limiting. This semester I'm teaching uh, one of our basic screenwriting courses called Writing Short Films. They adapt a short story in the class and then they move on in other classes to do original, longer scripts. In today's class, we're going to be um, discussing Jean Renoir's great short film, A Day in the Country. It's a beautiful adaptation of a Guy de Maupassant short story. The one big change you'll, you'll see between the story and the film is the attitude toward nature on the part of Maupassant and Renoir. So there's that epilogue where he comes back and finds her and she's married, right? So what's, what's the mood that you took from that or the feeling you took from that? That uh, he was sad about it, I guess. Like he'd always had this envision of her as like, I don't know, like an idealistic person. I'm also teaching a course on Steven Spielberg this semester. Can you give me some breaks? We're on his early years still, and I'm going to show the Sugarland Express, which is one of his early feature-length efforts. It, it's a very mature film, and it, it was a flop. And so it put Spielberg off making tragic films for a while. Suddenly they realized this was life and death. This was not, this was a tragedy, and uh, the audience got really, really angry. And. Uh, how did you feel when, when the tide turned in the film? I think uh, audiences would be more open to it nowadays. It's after Badlands and Bonnie and Clyde, which it's much less violent than Bonnie and Clyde. Part of the point of this class is that he was making dark works from, you know, when he was the age of the students in the class. <laughs> so it's not something he just discovered late in life. And so that gives you some insights into uh, you know, the range of a great popular creative artist. It's many ways basically an attack on sort of like the sort of youth optimistic culture of the time, mm -hmm. the we can do it, we can do anything just so long mm -hmm. as we believe. I really value the outspoken student who has opinions and can back them up. That's the goal of college, I think, is not to just sit there and uh, just, you know, t listen to the teacher and just believe everything he says. The biggest surprise I got was you learn more from your students in a way than they do from you uh, because it's a real interchange and, and you get your ideas tested and, and they come up with insights you hadn't thought about. It's very exciting. And I think there's a time in life to get from people and then there's a time in life to give to people and I think teaching is a form of giving and it's a good feeling. <laughs>